Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Dual Screens podcast. They say that the perfect game does not exist. We're going to challenge that notion today on this week's show. Joining us is Christian Gambadori, game director and developer of Ravenous Devils, a horror cooking simulator where the secret ingredient is crime. That is just the best, the most how can I put it in a way that really does it justice? That is the most profound and satisfying pitch for a game, <laughs> yet with enough mystery that I've ever heard. Christian, welcome to the show. How's it going, man? Thank you, Andy, for introducing me. It's a real pleasure to be here. And uh, yes, so that pitch, uh, <laughs> what, even when we fought uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, we were really excited to do something like this, uh, something so strange and uh, gory and uh, grotesque at the same time. Yeah, I mean, when I say it's the perfect game, I really think it is the perfect game because I am a very deeply disturbed individual and I love all things horror, especially dark horror and things that kind of push it. I mean, I was raised on movies like Chainsaw Massacre and Nightmare on Elm Street and Sounds of the Lamb. So this all seems very familiar to me. And it's like you've plucked out one of my deepest, darkest gaming fantasies and made it into an actual game. So before we go into how this game came to be, where 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 you pulled it from, from which dark corner of your mind, um, give us an overview of what's happening in ravenous devils like those the what it is and what the core gameplay loop looks like for those who haven't bought it yet because they will by the time this episode's <laughs> over i guarantee it give me like the more the more expanded uh pitch of the game yeah uh the the game uh, at its base is uh, really, really simple it's a management game where you control these two uh, these two main characters that are two both serial killers. They are an happy couple, an happy, an happy married couple. Um, in the beginning of the game, they just moved in this new city where they bought uh, this house, where they will work. And uh, they are escaping from something, but uh, you don't uh, get told what are they, what, um, why they are escaping. and. Uh, in the game, you control a tailor, which is uh, Percival, in the in this uh, in this house, which is uh, split in four floors. Uh, the tailor is at the top, where uh, he takes uh, his uh, measurements, he makes clothes, and uh, he welcomes uh, his customers and he kills them. And uh, <laughs> when he kills them, of course, uh, <laughs> he will throw them uh, in. Uh, Tractor that is uh, in his tailor lab. Uh, the tractor lives in the kitchen where Ildred, the cook, uh, will take care of the corpses and uh, will grind and uh, okay, cut them off right into delicious pies, delicious meals that uh, she can cook. There are many recipes in the game, so you can have uh, a lot of fun uh, making all of them. There are uh, pies, sticks, uh, and uh, crouton. Uh, and uh, many, many things. And essentially, uh, this, this game, uh, even though it's a, um, a management game, we tried to, to put a story in it, a mm. narrative element uh, that is, uh, mm, is usually missing from this type of games that uh, uh, aim for a, for a, only for the gameplay loop. So we, we put this uh, narrative in. And uh, the, two, the two characters are uh, in danger when you, uh, well, uh, after you uh, start the game, after a while, you will get uh, blackmailed by someone who knows their secret. So from there, uh, you need to get to the end to know how things will go for them. Yeah, I think, you know, the game has been out for a couple of weeks now, and I know you're all done with the marketing and all that kind of fun stuff. But as I was playing this, I was like, I had the perfect marketing tagline strip slaughter serve sell yeah 
that's like the main the main four points of the game. Uh, what I love about this game is I'm not a fan of management type sims, but if they're if they have enough fun in the actual gameplay, it really keeps you going. And this is the kind of game where just having the tailor, he takes measurements of his customers, and then you can just click, and he stabs him in the eye, and he <laughs> gets him in the throat. And then they go down the trap door and then in the grinder. Watching all of that is I never get tired of it. And I'm not sure if it's more of a reflection on me as like, why do I enjoy watching a whole human being go through a meat grinder? It excites me. That's a whole other conversation for a different kind of podcast. But where, where how did this come about? Because the idea of you're murdering people and cooking them. It's like cooking mama and Sweeney Todd had a baby. Yeah. Um, where, where did this come from? Tell me the story of this game's, its origin, its conception. Give me all that fun stuff. We really put uh, all our design efforts in into the gameplay loop uh, because uh, we knew it needed to be easy to pick up. Uh, uh, art to master in the long term because if you got to the end, you know that the game uh, gets uh, really difficult at the end. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, it needs to be uh, fun. Um, the idea came from um, in the beginning came from Eleonora, that uh, the other developer that works with me today she couldn't be here. Mm. Uh, she found. Uh, like in, uh, in 2021 in October, she found the, this uh, little demo uh, of Lemon Cake. I don't know if you know the game. What was it called again? Lemon Cake. Lemon Cake. Yeah. Okay. It's a cooking, cooking simulator with uh, cozy, cozy vibe, really tune uh, style uh, graphics. Hmm. Uh, so she found this and uh, we thought, uh, why don't we put blood everywhere? I mean, <laughs> the game <laughs> is there. Yeah, we are big fans of uh, horror movies and our uh, scary stories. So we immediately thought of Sweeney Todd that, that could be the perfect fit for this kind of genre. Because if you think the, of the movie and the story that it, it's behind Sweeney Todd, it's essentially a cooking game. Mm-hmm. So we can, uh, okay, that it's into right a gameplay loop, and uh, that part was really simple. The hardest part was uh, to like uh, to guide the player in the beginning to understand the the flow of the game. Mm-hmm. We really, really put uh, in a lot of effort in the, the initial tutorial and the initial part of the game because if uh, if you lose the player in the beginning, you you lost them forever. Um, so we tried not to uh, make the the first part too difficult, but really not too easy, and at the same time it needed to um, put some curiosity in the player minds to go on and on and on. And uh, every day he wants to buy something else, some some upgrades, the tables, uh, the greenhouse, another uh, vegetable, another ingredient. So you keep going to see how things will change during the gameplay. And uh, I think that um, that part of the upgrade is what really sold the game. Yeah, I mean, the idea of like, you know, in the beginning, as you're killing your first victims and grinding them and making pies out of their flesh, there's little comments like, oh, this oven's kind of slow, but in due time, I'll have more money or I can have two ovens or... With the selling of the clothes, you know, you get a better, a better tailoring, you know, um, parts and you can get that to go faster. When you're, when you guys were laying out the actual steps, because I would imagine you're saying to yourselves, well, if we owned a shop and we killed people, how would that look like? So are you imagining, okay, so I have this shop, I'm killing customers harvesting their flesh we're baking pies what does that look like on the floor plan like is that was that the process like when you were designing the whole the loop and all the mechanics like how was how was that all laid out well 
maybe that was our second work. <laughs> Who can tell? <laughs> is this a, anyway, a confession anyway. and not a video game? Is it your, is it a, <laughs> what you're doing behind the shadows? This is I all mean, the cover up. The, in, I can tell you this, in the, in the begin when we started developing the game, uh, we were going uh, just for the poop to be playable mm. and not the player. So there wasn't the killing part, there was just the management and cooking part uh, with the pub and the kitchen. But then we thought that um, players would have loved, would have loved uh, to kill the, their customers and uh, we, could, uh, we could have made that funny. Because if you if you, you play the game, so you saw mm -hmm. that all the animations are, are really goofy, are, um, the characters are really exaggerated in their talking, the personal thought is like Batman. <laughs> in, 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 in. <laughs> yes, it's exactly like Batman, yeah. yeah it's it's <laughs> a really violent that comes game, to mind. but at the same time it's really funny. It's like um, Tim Burton. Uh, style yeah. where mm -hmm. you have a lot of blood a lot of dark but uh, it's it's really fun to watch so we, we aim for that developing the game yeah and it's it's funny how even like these characters you know even in the beginning you spend very little time with them but you get to know them so well that they're a little they're evil but they're also greedy because they're talking yeah. about they want to sell these at the highest price they're selling the clothes of their victims, which is like, come on, like, it's enough. And like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna charge the full price for these bloody little clothes. And it's just, it's really, we, it, it's over the top where. Yeah, we, uh, we, we focus really much on the, the main theme of the game is the, the greed of mm. uh, the, the whole, the whole characters in the game, because all the characters in the okay, game are evil, right except up. for the boy. Even though during uh, uh, the little boy, even though during one of his uh, little, enca little encounters, mm -hmm. uh, he starts to become uh, evil because he starts uh, to meet uh, people in the cities in the city that are criminals. So uh, that was the, the serious part of the game where they couldn't really stop. We with the gameplay loop, we um, we tried to. Uh, to uh, make f mm, the player needs to feel their greed they they need uh, they want more and more and more and they won't stop until the end yeah That's man important. yeah it, it comes through beautifully uh you know this the, this idea you know the concept of ravenous devils it sounds like a lot of fun on paper like if someone said hey I have this game where you kill people and sell their body parts and you make pies out of them and, and you have a shop. It sounds like a lot of fun, but when you're releasing this game, what is that like? Do you think, will this connect with an audience? What was that part like for you guys? Like, cause I'm, you know, I'm sure like as you're making it, it sounds like this is great. This is going to be awesome. Like this, this can't go wrong. Like we're going to find an audience, but how do you, how do you audience test for like a very unique concept? But yes, it's a cooking sim, but there's this dark element that's also heavily in the forefront of the whole experience. Uh, well, we we weren't sure until the demo came out uh, if if the game uh, if players would would have liked the game because mm. uh, it was something new. It was something different from the usual cooking management uh, games. We had uh, doubts, mm -hmm. and uh, but then uh, in the we released the demo in the October Steam Next, mm -hmm. and uh, players really loved it. So um, we were we were really happy about that. Mm, the I think uh, we we fared the most. Uh, what we fared the most was the the balancing of the game, mm. because. Uh, in, you certainly played it. Uh, the animations are slow. The the pace is not like uh, an overcooked pace where it's really fast. You have uh, a lot of borders, a lot of things to go, and the, the the characters move really fast. This game is um, uh, a lot more realistic. The um, one of the design pillars of the game 
was to put uh, animations, a lot of animations for every object, a lot of unique okay, animations. So when they go pick, up, picking something up, they have a little animation. They kill, they have the kill animation. When they, they need to open something or they need to fix something, they have this animation that can uh, last even for some seconds. Mm -hmm. And uh, that uh, helped also the why these animations are so long, because they need to control two of them. So when, uh, when uh, one character is uh, busy doing an action, you can go to the other one and uh, order something as the other character. So this creates this loop where when, so when one of them finished, the other one is ready to do something else. And uh, it was really important uh, to, to build this and that was our biggest fear, if the players would have liked this kind of uh, pace, but uh, they enjoyed it, so it's really good. And what's it been like since the game has fully come out? What's the reception been? Um, now that it's out there, the world sees it, it has it in their hands. I've seen a lot of fun YouTube videos and Twitch clips. It's just, it's all over the place. Yeah, it, it's, it's been received uh, overwhelmingly positive for us. I mean, on Steam, it has 92% uh, positive uh, views. We, we wouldn't thought uh, about this uh, as well, even on consoles. Uh, surprisingly, on uh, Xbox uh, Series X and uh, Xbox One, it uh, went really well. Oh, it did? Even, even better than uh, Switch, even though on Switch it got uh, many, many wishes. Mm. Uh, so we will uh, probably convert them during sales. Uh, we already have in mind um, an update uh, adding an endless mode, so we will uh, uh, put a sale when that came out, come out and see how things will go. And anyway, it's, uh, many videos came out, Twitch was uh, full of people playing it uh, well, in the first weeks when uh, it released, and uh, we were there watching all of them. We watched all of them. <laughs> What is that like for you watching someone? Because like this game is very streamer friendly where it's a very passive game, but it's also very active. And then you're setting actions and letting the players just do them. And you're watching it unfold. Having a streamer play this game along with their audience is just a perfect game because they're all watching the experience yeah. unfold even the player because they're not really doing much they're just pointing and saying what to do but there's less of a focus and they can focus on their audience and the experience of killing and baking so it, it lends itself well to that too yeah we, when we when we watch streamers and youtubers we always uh we are studying <laughs> that's our job we are, <laughs> we are watching every every move they are doing to to see if uh, we explained well the things, to see if uh, anything was wrong. But uh, this game really is, as you say, is, it's really streamer friendly because uh, you can talk while playing. I mean, it's not the kind of game that needs a lot of focus in the beginning, at least. So you can uh, you can talk, you can uh, do you can do stuff in the game. Plus, it's uh, it's really cheap. For, uh, for its price, so yeah. I think that many, many YouTubers and streamers, even uh, little ones, got got the game because it was uh, very cheap. So we we made a walkthrough for a couple of dollars, and that was perfect for them. That's uh, that's really important. We fought really well about the price point of the game because uh, we couldn't price the game more than five dollars. I mean. It's, uh, I think you could uh, have, but we'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> yes, we, we could, but um, maybe some players would have uh, not, not liked it because uh, it's not that long. Mm -hmm. I think that um, okay. in today's gaming uh, scenario, games, the price die, you need to have uh, high replayability or uh, high, um, it needs to last a lot to me, mm -hmm. 60. 30, 20, 10 hours. This game lasts for four hours. In four hours, you complete the story, and then maybe you need to do some uh, side quests or unlock anything else to get all the achievements. That's it. I mean, 
I think it's really really well priced and a lot of reviews on Steam and even on, on the consoles talks talk about the, the price point of the game. They they really appreciated that it was this low. So I think we made the, the right decision. Yeah, because you know, when I first saw this game and I saw the price point, I was a little I was shocked because a game that has this much polish and this much activity and depth of character and and mechanics i was like what's the catch is it like a tech demo is it like over in five minutes and then that's it and you've stolen my five dollars um but you know for as for as little as it lasts as I for, can. Okay, again four to six hours you know for your typical player you get a lot of value out of that five dollars which i think I most games who have a similar experience in terms of the length will charge double that even like fourteen dollars yeah. so you've really done something amazing here you have a very polished well put together fun dark humor game that's less than what so i would say coffee but if you're in the states less than what gas costs so you know it's uh good for you and i feel and then again that is gonna feed into your player base and get more buyers because it's, it's like I was telling my friends, it costs nothing. Like, yeah. play it. And if you don't like it, what have you really lost? $5? I, I will buy it for you just so you can play this game. Yeah, that's... I mean, we had a, a lot of uh, devel other developers talking with us uh, and saying that uh, we were crazy about the price point because they entered the Steam page, they looked at images, they saw the graphics, the animation, and they told, they told us... This is like something like a fifteen to twenty dollar game. Right. You can price that with that, but they didn't know the game in itself. So uh, we knew extremely well that um, our play, our player base, and uh, also we with the demo, we we made a, a form with the demo for players that tried the demo in October last mm -hmm. year, and uh, many players. Uh, we ask them how how much would they pay would they pay for this game they the, the most um, chosen question was ten dollars hmm. so i mean wow it's, uh, and you guys yeah. went half like people yeah. who liked your game we, and played your game said i'd pay ten dollars you would say okay yeah. at that time i mean we we uh, we didn't put that question into hmm. To change our uh, price because we already knew that we would have priced the game five dollars. Hmm. Uh, we we just wanted to see uh, what's the the, the 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 value that the players are right. What well, people that. think this game is worth when they're playing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because uh, that's really that's really important. When when uh, we saw this, we thought, uh, uh, well, people really like this game. Really, are really enjoying it. So we. We need to go this way. If the price was something else, if they, the reception was different during the demo, we would have changed something. But uh, that was okay. So we we made the right decision there. Mm. How how fun is it putting this game on the Nintendo Switch? The Switch, which I feel, I mean, the Switch, it's come a long way. Nintendo has really evolved in terms of getting more mature titles like you know gal guns on there and mortal Kombat, so they're no stranger to to sex and violence but still seeing a game that has you <laughs> murdering people and <laughs> baking pies out of their baking out of their flesh pie. there is some satisfaction playing that on the nintendo system yeah, what did yeah. you say <laughs> We need the, we needed to censor every trailer and every image, but uh, uh, we could have sold the game there, so we went for it. In, was the I think the Nintendo Switch version is the best. Mm. I mean, playing really? the game and Elder, uh, we we have a Switch, so we, we tried it. It was a uh, really really fun. Yeah. Plus, it has the touch support. The oh wow! Support. Okay. See, I'm I'm like I have it on PS5 and I just got it for Steam like a few days ago because I'm the Steam Deck is gonna be here in a couple of days, so I'm preparing for that. It works there too, and, oh, with, boy. and players, uh, some players re reviewed the game that and 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 told uh, 
Uh, the game looks fantastic on as Steam Deck. We, okay, we couldn't test it right. because uh, we, uh, we don't have it yet. Uh, but uh, it's like the Nintendo Switch. Like so it. it's because it's handheld, it's really, really nice to have. What, uh, what challenges do you face when you're bringing this over to a console? Because I know Steam, Steam is a very open door, you know, policy when it comes to putting games on their platform. I feel like anything goes. Like if you have a game that's not even finished, they'll be like, yeah, throw it on there. It's totally fine. We're good. But getting it to a console, what, what are those steps like? And how did having a publisher help you overcome some of those challenges? Yeah, Steam is uh, really don't care what you put in the store, so <laughs> they just uh, leave you. Uh, consoles is, are really, really hard. I mean, uh, we didn't have any experience. We published two, two games before this, uh, both on Steam. This is, this is the first one on consoles. We, we knew some, uh, we had some friends that uh, made ports for, the, for their games uh, previously, so we contacted them. They already had the, the, the dev kits. They are the Trouble Bites games that you told uh, them. Of course, last friends week. of the show. Mm -hmm. And um, they helped us uh, on the technical side of things because there are many, many things that you need to consider when porting a game. The first thing that uh, can come up to mind is the hardware. I mean, the game uh, released also on uh, PS4 and Xbox One. And uh, some, uh, some, texture, some textures need to be lowered in quality. And uh, some models need, needed to be lowered in the polygons. You need to do all these little adjustments for consoles that cost time. So you, you need to plan it some months before release. I think we started the port uh, in January mm. of this year. It lasted for two months months of development of consoles. Plus, there's uh, consoles are really, really slow to approve uh, uh, your submissions. Right. I mean, you approve a build, you approve the screenshots, the trailers for the store, and uh, weeks, weeks and weeks. You, know, you need to wait a lot. So <laughs> that's really different from Steam. You just put the screenshot and Steam and publish. This is really <laughs> Do you think you would take a similar approach for your next game, putting it on Steam first, self-publish, and then pursue a publisher for the console, or just do a side-by-side, across-the-board release? I think uh, we will do the same thing for the next one. I mean, we can publish it on Steam, and then a publisher will come in to publish it on consoles, mm -hmm. and Epic Games and Bobby, because uh, Revenge Dev is released also on the well, there are differences to Epic Games and on <laughs> the developer side. Uh, but yes, this approach uh, allow us to um, to get uh, back all the development uh, uh, costs because we, we we take all the cut from Steam and uh, we take a little cut from consoles. Plus, uh, we really love to release our game on consoles because uh, i mean uh, as a player myself uh, and uh, i don't know to seeing the the icon of the pie on the playstation uh, really really fulfill our art so, yeah it's an amazing thing like again like steam is so lax with what goes on their platform but seeing your baby your horrifying yeah. bloody <laughs> pie baby on a playstation it's just it's a whole other different feeling because the rules are yeah. different and standards are different and to be among their very carefully curated you've gone through the hoops to get on our service on our platform as fast as yeah, I can. It's, it's a whole different ball game right up. we are also trying to get the uh, the game into the game pass oh wow yeah. okay so let's talk about that you did mention that most of the sales on the console side, you were surprised by how much the Xbox audience yeah. connected with that. Do you guys know why? Like, why did this resonate so much with the Xbox it audience a, specifically? It was a, a surprise for us and also for the publisher because we we both uh, thought that we would have uh, sold more on Switch. 
mm-hmm. but that wasn't the case. So after we saw that Xbox was, uh, really went well, uh, the um, Travel Bytes Games uh, tried to email uh, Xbox staff and uh, tell them to try the Game Pass mm-hmm. because uh, that could be a thing. This is still a work in progress, uh, so we don't know yet, but uh, mm. there are ch- chances that uh, the game will be accepted. That'd be and great. I mean, lot. yeah, that'd be amazing. But and I'm wondering about like the the risk reward in that because that's one of your strongest console user bases, and the game doesn't cost much to the to the to the gamer. So, what kind of deal? What that look like where you're taking you're taking money up front from Microsoft to put the game on Game Pass, which couldn't affect it may undercut sales or maybe it may boost sales. What what is what's the thought process behind wanting to put the game on Game Pass? Um on consoles, the game receive receives uh, most of uh, its visibility in uh, launch week. Mm-hmm. After the launch week, if you go into the console stores, Microsoft Store and the PlayStation Store, uh, the game disappears. Mm. So after a while, uh, that's worth for us to to get some deals like the Game Pass because the right. game gets uh, some more visibility of, out of the store. It feels new again. Yeah, because right. it's still an indie game. I mean, mm. indie games really really struggles on consoles. Um, this was uh, this added its uh, risk, risks, revenues, devils adds its risks, but right. people uh, enjoyed it, so we are happy for this. That was pretty well. Yeah, and you have like a pool of like close to even more so now of 20, 20 or 25 million users subscribed to Game Pass. So if a fraction's like, hey, this game is really cool and I think I want to own it, but then again, it only, it's only four hours to finish. I can beat it in an afternoon. Like, thanks, Game Pass. For uh, I mean, for... yeah, Game Pass really allowed this uh, this thing where you get there, you try a game, even though it's indie, you don't, you didn't pay anything, so you're happy. Uh, I think that um, players that play on uh, Xbox are more willing to play indie games mm-hmm. than uh, on other platforms. Mm-hmm. I think. Uh, that's a good thing. I mean, that's a good thing that, uh, game, that the Game Pass can offer. Mm-hmm. The big player base. Yeah, I mean, you have a lot of the folks, they mainly wait for, I mean, they, they buy into that service for the big AAA first party games. But while they're waiting, here's an entire host of indie games that you can enjoy at no extra charge. It's part of your, it's part of your plan. Give them some love. And then maybe at the end, because I think... I've actually bought a few games as they're about to leave Game Pass. Like, you know what? I really enjoyed this game. I want to own it. Boom. Yeah, there, there was a, there, there was that period when uh, um, uh, Sea of Thieves was free mm. on Game Pass, but uh, uh, Steam sales really raised. So I mean, right. people that people a player that uh, tries a game on Game Pass is more willing to uh, get that on another platform because uh, the game on the Game Pass uh, lives after a while. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the catalog is uh, right. refreshed, so you you get that game if you like it. Yeah. So what it's what's what's the future hold for you guys you've released this game to great success you have game pass talks hopefully in the near future to get some more audience more eyeballs on this amazing little game you guys created what's coming down the pipeline taking a break no <laughs> <laughs> we never take breaks uh, <laughs> we we are working on uh, the endless mode for yeah. Miss david which uh, we'll add uh, uh, police uh, and uh, uh, wanted oh, system, so you can yes. get both now. Oh, That's game over. Yeah, baby. <laughs> the base game doesn't have a game over. You just lose a reputation if you mm-hmm. don't. Uh, uh, if you don't, if you're not playing well in right. this new mode, if uh, you if Percival gets caught by the policeman, uh, 
uh, you lose. So you need to clean the blood and uh, kill the people in the right moment. And uh, there are there may be moments where you can't kill people, so mm. you end up don't have meat for the kitchen. Right. You cook, uh, this this new mode, uh, you can cook just vegetables. So you need to have uh, a lot of fertilizer ready if you can kill the people. So you need to ah. do this decision in the way. Interesting. So if you and can't, if you the, can't, uh huh. After this, we are thinking of a, a new game. It's uh, still everything in the air, but uh, uh, we are really excited to to do something new. Are you gonna stay in the same genre, like a little black comedy horror game, or something totally different with this tone? We we, we will stay in the in the horror themes, but uh, and the. The genre will probably be the same, yeah. Same management and uh, this kind of stuff, but uh, okay. we will put our twist because uh, uh, you, you say previously that you don't like, uh, you don't usually like management games. Yeah, I mean, we listen, the, if, the, if, the, if the loop is fun, like, listen, yeah. one game that comes to mind is Moonlighter. Moonlighter is a game where it's a Zelda dungeon crawler, plus it's a shop management sim where you're putting out all of your treasure all of your found items and just selling it and you're upgrading your shop hiring staff getting money to get upgrades to go fight bigger bosses to get better loot to then sell that's a fun loop for me it's it's simming it's sim and dungeon crawl i, I love that combination you need in a magic in a i i totally respect your your opinion because uh, uh, in a man- not in many do. That, <laughs> I think that in a man- in a management game you need to put something else, some mm. spice, some uh, some something you literally need because uh, mm. because uh, management games uh, tend to be repetitive uh, right. very very soon. So you need to put something else in it. Otherwise, uh, it's boring to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm just thinking about your game, like how. These folks are just so greedy. I'm surprised they don't ring up the mop and make blood juice or blood punch and sell that on the side mm-hmm. along with the pies and the <laughs> and the clothes. Um so all right, that's listen, this game is it was a lot of fun and I can't wait for this new endless mode that there's cops involved now and a, a game over state. So that sounds very exciting and you know what comes in the future i think you guys have a nice grip on what makes a really fun addictive sim game so as long as you keep that core premise with the twist that you guys bring to the genre you're going to be fine and i'm very excited about the future for you guys we 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 can't wait to to show you something else we can't wait yeah i can't wait either all right christian before we say goodbye it's the best part of the show it's rapid fire yeah so get ready so now we're gonna get to the dark shit and open that pie and see what it's made of all right so i think the first question i want to ask you is if i if i turned you into a meat pie yeah what what would you taste like Mm, i would taste like my room it tastes like you're. <laughs> yeah. I'm always inside here. <laughs> um, if I was a meat pie, what do you think I would taste like? Like that meat pie you have. Uh, oh yeah, behind. very appropriate, by <laughs> the way. <laughs> God, you know, I feel like your game teaches people too well how to run a murder meat pie shop. So, <laughs> um, speaking of food, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Uh, no, I'm Italian, so mm. not really a thing here. Mm. Not a big fan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How do you make a traditional carbonara? Eggs. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, I don't know how it's spelled in English. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Like the uh, okay. I think I know what word, what word you're trying to look for. Yeah, I'm looking for a word. Jowls. Mm-hmm. Uh, I 
and uh, cheese. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I made one the other day, like a from like a not from scratch, but just like the traditional eggs, cheese, um, not bacon, but like you know, and uh, just pasta and water from the pasta water it came you out. Can, uh, uh, instead of jars, you can put bacon, but yeah. uh, I think jars is... Uh, the is more traditional, better. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a masterpiece. Would you rather have the power of flight or invisibility? Light. Mm. Because Where? I don't have a car. <laughs> Where would you go first? Uh... I live a uh, really distant from my girlfriend, so uh, mm. that would be the first place. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd fly away from my partner sometimes, <laughs> like, bye! <laughs> um, if your girlfriend got a phone call that you were arrested, what crime did you commit? Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like, what crimes have you already committed? <laughs> I, I, I got some some uh, car crashes before that. Oh man. That wouldn't be the prison. Um, I don't know. I'm not a violent person, even though I made, okay. I made violent games. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that, I think that's the best part. I feel like most of us who aren't, you know, don't have anger issues or a tendency towards violence we have a really sick part of our brain that we don't access often because we're not out there actually hurting people so we yeah. <laughs> we, we put that into like you know into the, the creative aspect so that's that's good it's a more benefit to us um what is the dumbest way you've ever hurt yourself as fast as i can okay it's coming right up mm, i once i uh, this finger Mm -hmm. ring, my left ring finger. I, like I, uh, I got hit by football uh, ball. Mm -hmm. here. Okay. And uh, it it went uh, like this, something like this. For uh, <laughs> <laughs> it it was very stupid because the ball was coming and uh, it, it went like oh my I god. I got the ball uh, th this way, and uh, yeah, that wasn't painful, but uh, it was re really really stupid. And uh, as of today. <laughs> Is the the finger is still not straight at all. Okay. Well, speaking about stupid things, what is something you have done that should have killed you? Hmm. Uh, once uh, I almost got under a motorbike. How? In the, I was walking in the middle of the street. <laughs> Oh my god. Um if you had a choice to either go backwards in time or forwards in time, which way would you go? Backwards. And mm. I would, would work as, as a tailor in a tailor shop. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean seriously, I I really like um all the old ages. I mm. big. I'm, I'm a big fan of medieval stuff. Uh, yeah. European medieval stuff and uh, even 19th century London. I really like that. So I, I would go back for it. What would you do? Let's say you lived in those times. What do you see yourself doing as an occupation? Like, are you a blacksmith? Are you a knight? Like, what, where do you see yourself? I I really I like animals and uh, mm -hmm. farm animals, so I think I would work as a, as a farmer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Making pies? <laughs> <laughs> no, let, let's say that we, we leave the animals, the animals alive. <laughs> <laughs> what are they good for? You got to eat them at some point. Aren't they there for food? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Would you rather fight? One giant horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses. Hmm. I I prefer the single one, the, mm. the 
giant duck. Uh, you and the giant uh, duck. You, you ain't gonna last long. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got some practice on uh, on Don't Start with the duck giant duck. That's a that's a boss on uh, Don't Start with the giant. Oh, Don't Starve! Yes, oh, yeah. one of my favorite games. I love that game so much. God, I should play it later. Um, but you don't starve while you're playing uh, Ravenous Devils. Hey, oh, all right. Um, all right. This is going to be a fun way to end it. Um, Baking time. What do you want players to get out of Ravenous Devils? I have just put four to six hours into your game. Controller is down. Game over. What feeling do you want me to have? after playing your game. What's the takeaway? You want more. I mean, that's, that's more it. meat pies? <laughs> you, you, you want to go on. If mm -hmm. something finish, finishes and you want to go on, we did our work well. Yeah, you did. And Christian, this game, let me tell you, it left a really good taste in my mouth. And I'm not sure where that's going to take me. If I'm in jail a month from now, you'll know why. Um, <laughs> listeners that's the end of our show thank you so much for coming on this week christian it's been a blast the game is amazing it's on steam it's as on console it's okay. only five dollars you have no excuse christian where can folks find you and ravenous devils and fine. bad vices games you can find us uh, on all socials facebook twitter tiktok instagram and on steam on Steam, we have, we have the and Discord also. Mm -hmm. uh, you can access the Discord by Steam or Twitter. There's a link to it. And, uh, and, and, and on Steam, we have our publisher page. So you can check all our, our previous games. Right. And we'll have all those links for you guys below to check out Ravenous Devils and Bite immediately. Folks, that's going to do it for this week. It's been a lot of fun, Christian. You have made one of my most surprisingly fun games of the year so far i feel like this is why i love indies because it's just when you think the creativity in the indie scene has peaked a game like this comes out and it's like now nah, there's still so much more left to go in the well so thank you for yeah. that and i cannot wait for your thank next you game. for playing and uh, for uh, for coming me for letting me of course with of course all right that's it for this week, listeners. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christian. And as always, try a meat pie because you never know who it's going to be. All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Take care.